So the Buckeyes back at home on Saturday as we welcome in Tony Gerdeman from BuckeyeHuddle.com. Gerd, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, Mark. How you doing? Not too bad. As Ohio State, as Ryan Day put it, the number one thing is to win. They did win the game against Northwestern, but boy, they did not look good at doing it as they had the, the wind gust up to 50 miles per hour. They had to run the ball, and at times it was difficult to run the ball. It's been the case the last couple of weeks when you've talked about the Ohio State running game, and I, I guess the concerning part is at the point of attack, they were getting shut down. They were having trouble third and short, fourth and short. The short yardage situations where you would hope you'd be able to power your way past Northwestern did not happen on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and even Ryan Day admitted admitted that on Tuesday that yeah, you're being outnumbered at the line, but still you want to be able to get a yard. You're not asking uh, to pick up four yards on third and one. You just want that one yard. Have two guys make make a little bit of room and go. And you know, as a unit, the offensive line wasn't able to do that throughout the, the first half. They really struggled with that. And so now you go back and you look at the film and see is it. Is it one guy? Is it two guys? Is it the scheme? Is it this? Is it, is it not seeing the hole? And as Ryan Day said, it's kind of concerning because every time it's something different. And so that gives you several things to fix. And if it's something different each time, that starts to play into who you can trust, when you can trust them, and, and how you can trust them. Ohio State has talked an awful lot about being tough ever since the loss to Michigan. And yeah, they toughed out a win against Penn State. They toughed out a win against Northwestern. But are they tough enough to beat Michigan in two weeks? That's the question that is going to be answered, asked every single day until that game is played and the question is actually answered. And what I asked, what I asked Ryan Day on Tuesday is, you know, that Penn State game, that Northwestern game, two very different experiences, but you win the games in the fourth quarter is that – the, the testimony that the toughness is there rather than the theory that the toughness will be there. And, and he believes so, and he thinks things are trending in the right way. And that is one piece of evidence of the toughness, but then you go back to the third and short and the short yardage stuff, which is another evidence of you're not where you need to be yet. So they've got a couple of weeks to get there. And then when they face Michigan, you know, those, those, short yardage situations are going to be more important than ever. And maybe having CJ Stroud become a runner now helps you get through those, or at least slows down the defense enough because they still might have to account for him in that running game. Taking a look at a lot of the bowl projections, Ohio State still projected to make the college football a playoff. So everybody is assuming they're going to beat Michigan. Yet there's a lot of discussion that perhaps Michigan's the more complete team than Ohio State. I think it was Joel Clad who said Ohio State may have a higher ceiling, but Michigan's got a higher floor than the Buckeyes. It's interesting because Ryan Day was asked kind of about Ohio State's two styles of offense, two goals where you have to be prepared to play in the Big Ten, but then you also have to be, he wants them to be prepared to play in the postseason, which are two very different things. Michigan, it seems they are primed to play in the Big Ten. And so when you that is your your goal and your designation, it's not surprising that you might look better. But then how does Michigan look in December and January? I think we'll have a different answer then, but in terms of these two programs right now, I, I still I agree that Ohio State has the higher ceiling. Michigan, you know, when you look at the first halves of their games, they are leading in, in the Big Ten play at halftime by an average score of 14 to 10. And they've not really played a very difficult schedule. Now, in the second half, they pound teams. Ohio State pounds teams by more in the second half and the first half. But right now, Ohio State's going through a stretch where just that inability to run the ball has created all kinds of clouds around them and doubts and just you're, you're not sure if they're going to be able to do it. And that leads into the questions that everybody had about them to start the season, the questions that came from the way they were beaten by Michigan last year, and that continues to linger. And it doesn't matter what Ohio State does against Indiana. It doesn't matter what they do against Maryland. It only matters what they do against Michigan. And then if they do that, then – then it gets to the important part of the, the postseason and what they do there. But we won't know until the Michigan game if they are ready for Michigan, if that toughness is the, the exact kind of toughness they, they need. 
another narrative that has emerged coming out of this Northwestern win is if you want to rattle C.J. Stroud, you get pressure on him. And granted, the Ohio State offensive line does a pretty good job of keeping pressure off of C.J. Stroud. But is that the key to slowing down the Buckeyes is getting pressure on Stroud? I think the key is getting 50 mile an hour winds in his face with the sideways rain. That is the, the real key. And if you can do that, you can hold him under 100 yards passing. But, you know, Michigan got pressure on him last year and he threw for 400 yards. So uh, there, there's pressure. There's uh, yeah, nobody, no quarterback wants to be pressured, but he has stepped up this season when needed, whether it be throwing or running in the fourth quarter and has done what he, he needs to do. But yeah, I think we all see where sometimes he's, he's not as comfortable as he wants to be. And, and so he, he makes some mistakes or throws, he's not as accurate. Instead of 75% completion, he might be 65% but he's still one of the best players in the nation, even with that pressure. But if you can keep him clean, I mean, he's got the receivers to pick you apart no matter who you have in the secondary. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Part of the reason why the Ohio State Northwestern game was in doubt until the fourth quarter was the fact that the Wildcats were able to move the ball against the Ohio State defense. Jim Knowles not at all happy about the third down conversion rate, but the silver lining is Ohio State was perfect on fourth down. So what's the story with the Buckeye defense? You know, I think it was the it was the second drive of the game where Northwestern got the bulk of their yards. I think uh, that was the only drive where, um, you know, it was a sustained, long-scoring touchdown drive. That was their only touchdown drive. And if you look at the rest of their drives, you know, they, they had another one of like 60 yards, but that stopped at the Ohio State 36-yard line because that was the coffin corner punt to the four-yard line. That was like a 14-play, six-minute drive that never even got into field goal range. And, and so defensively, I think Ohio State did well enough. They held up. No, you can't throw. And you know, they eventually, in the second half, they really shut down the Wildcat running game, liter the figurative and literal Wildcat running game with the Wildcat that they had going on because they had no ability to throw the ball. They didn't even try to throw it. They threw it twice against the wind, Northwestern did. And so once all of that becomes realized, you just – you put everybody at like eight, nine guys in the box at times, and then it just becomes smash, smash mouth. It's uh, the three yards in a cloud of dust. And, you know, sometimes those three carries in a row leverage into a first down, and, and other times it leverage into a fourth and one, and Ohio State would hold. And you just, whatever, whatever that third down ended up being is kind of how it kind of dictated how those second half drives went. Yeah, it almost was like a return to option football, according to Jim Knowles. As the Buckeyes end at Northwestern, they got the win in Evanston and up next for Ohio State. They're at home taking on Indiana. Now, Gerd, if we look back two years ago, the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers, they had a little bit of a battle in Columbus. Ohio State did win that game, but because of COVID, Big Ten had to change some rules to get Ohio State into the Big Ten championship game. Indiana, you talk to some diehard Hoosier folks, Indiana still believes they should have been in the Big Ten championship game in 2020. But the fact of the matter is they did lose to Ohio State in 2020, and since then the Hoosier program has gone on a nosedive. Yeah, and I think the Big Ten was proven right there. Um, it, it's been tough to watch what has happened to Indiana, who came into it last year with all kinds of expectations and failed to live up to every single one of them. And, you know, they have injuries and quarterback issues and just, you know, they, they don't have the defensive talent that they've had in the past either. So none of none of it is working right now. And I think they come into Columbus at a very bad time because this is an Ohio State football team that is looking to reassert itself both through the air and both and on the ground. And Indiana doesn't really have anything that can put up a fight, which is why if Ohio State can't run the ball again, then now you know, like that. That's the only thing that can really tell me something about the Ohio State running game. I don't. If, if they run against Indiana, they should. If they don't, you've got to do something. That that's that's. It, it's a very bad sign if you can't run on Indiana, and it, it means you're not going to run on Michigan. Hoosiers, Tom Allen, defensive-minded head coach. As we get further away from the Kevin Wilson era in Indiana and you see more and more of Tom Allen's players in, it seems like the results have gone down in terms of wins and losses. Is Tom Allen perhaps on the hottest seat in terms of the Big Ten coaching situation now? You know, I, I wonder how long these hot seats will last once there are no divisions, because I don't know how much you can fault a, a guy in the Eastern Division, in the East, Big Ten East, for not being in the top four, top five. 
but um you know at this point you've seen everything that he can do and is that enough for you i don't think it is who's out there uh you know kalen DeBoer or something like somebody like that who has worked at indiana who is a, a known name in some circles and if there's somebody out there that can handle the the pressure of an indiana and there is pressure because you are expected to contend with maybe not ohio state and penn state and michigan but Everybody on in below that, all of these mid-level programs, like you can be the top of those and you can contend to be at the top of that game. And there will be expectations because everybody in the Big Ten should have expectations with all of this TV money coming in and the, the playoffs expanding to 12 teams. There shouldn't be a Big Ten team that can't have playoff expectations. I mean, look at Northwestern making the Big Ten championship game twice in the last four years. Everybody should have an opportunity. And if if you don't have an opportunity straight out of the gates, like you're already eliminated after two weeks and you have no hopes, get somebody in there that can give you some hopes. And that takes recruiting and that takes, you know, scheme and all of that, but also somebody who is probably going to be able to get into the transfer portal and find you some guys. As Ohio State will look to extend the nation's longest winning streak, active winning streak against an opponent, as they have not lost to Indiana since the late 1980s. 20-some straight victories, I believe 26 straight victories over the Hoosiers. I want to thank our guest, Tony Gerdman from BuckeyeHuddle.com. Gerd, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Talk to you later.